Hi, this is Clara C and you're watching Soompi.com. Hi, this is David Fung with Soompi.com and Make It in the Motherland and I'm here with Clara C. Hello. So, Clara, why don't you really quickly explain the face paint? Oh, the face paint. This is just my makeup in the morning and you gotta accept who I am. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, we just had a photo shoot and it involves a lot of paint and um, Soon B just came right at the end of the photo shoot, so it's just go time, and that's why it's still on my face. <laughs> I'm not crazy, I swear. So, I mean, that kind of comes in, in hand in hand with your really busy schedule. So, can you tell us a little bit about that and, and just everything that goes into everything that, right before the release of the album? Yeah, um, I mean, one of the things about being an independent artist is that everything is done by yourself, or like you're in command, and that's got its benefits and its disadvantages because um, it's a lot to do. Tell us a little bit about the album that's coming out in September. Okay, the album is, it's fun, it's bright, and um, it, it's real. It talks about things that I think that the world should hear, and things that I've experienced that I want others to know or to relate to. Um, it's definitely professional grade, so I'm very proud of that, and I hope it just turns out really amazing. That's kind of a being in a unique position as someone who's considered like a YouTube artist or initially got your big break on YouTube. Where mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about how that's different than, say, for example, just being independent and just coming out on your own without that sort of dynamic? So, uh, so yeah. Like that be, being having already having a in in some ways a very developed fan base uh -huh. based off YouTube, but then. This is your first album being released. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, I was talking to Kina briefly about this, too, and we were both talking about how YouTube, it's all YouTube. It's, it's a great launch pad. It's like, it's free, and people are making money off of it. And, um, yeah, it's a, nice, it's a nice pool of people to be like, hey, this is, this is me, this is what I'm outletting. Watch it today. It's like having your own TV channel. Mm -hmm. But it's your ultimate goal to move like there seems like to be a gap kind of between like what is considered a mainstream artist and then a YouTube artist. Mm -hmm. Are you ultimately are you trying to cross over to become a? Yeah, I'm. I'm just open to letting whatever happens happen because no matter what happens, I'll, I hope to have listeners, mm -hmm. and hope to have people who appreciate the art. So whether that's on the radio or on TV or just within my YouTube or wherever at Facebook, I'm happy with it all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think? It, you're in an interesting position being, for example, like part of this movement that a lot of particularly Asian Americans participate in on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And like, um, what is your whole thoughts on that entire industry basically that's come up? Well, regarding the movement, I think it's, it's cool and it's about time <laughs> because the Asian American population does have an, an immense amount of talent. And I think that it's good that we're being able to showcase it. And you know, there are people who have crossed over um, into mainstream, and I'm very proud of them. And uh, what was the second part of the question? Just, um, I guess, like how would... it is on YouTube, where like you probably have some fans where you're the, you're their absolute favorite artist, and you haven't even dropped an album yet. Oh yeah, it's amazing. It's really amazing, um, and they're all anticipating the album. It's kind of unreal because other artists who you know, well. The very popular story among artists is like, yeah, we've been doing this for like five years, we've been losing money off of gigs, and da -da 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 -da, and finally we're discovered. But for me, I've been very blessed and, and very grateful, because right from the get-go, it's just like, hey, I have people who fall. And the competitions I entered helped a lot, too, because they're like, they're births of attention. So. How do you deal with like the YouTube fame? Like, is that kind of weird? Do you get noticed when you go out? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I do, especially in like Asian crowds. Right. Uh, no, it's fine. I, I don't. I'm kind of like a. Is there, is there such a thing as like an extroverted introvert? Like I have an outgoing personality, but I like to be at home. I'm a homebody. Mm -hmm. Homebody. That's what it is. So if I get recognized, it's always kind of a little awkward. Cause you're just like, hey, and then they're like, can I take a picture with you? And it's like, yeah. And then if they leave right after that, then it's okay. But then sometimes they stay and like. <laughs> talking, I, I just, I don't know, my personality is just funny, I mm -hmm. get kind of like clammed up, but it's nice. A lot of people like have talked about when obviously the music quality is definitely there, but another reason that you're so popular is that you have like a quirky personality, mm -hmm. people always use that word and like where does I that like come that from word. and then what does it mean and like, 
well, just look at my face and you understand why. No, I just, I, I think I'm a dork and I'm proud of it and I embrace my inner dorkiness. And Do you think it's interesting that you're sort of like, you? I mean, you're obviously most of your fan base is young, right? This youth. They're like, yeah, YouTube, according to YouTube, they're like anywhere from 18 to 25. Mm -hmm. So they're young. But your style of music is not something that's typically considered what is like youth music, which would be like pop, R&B, hip hop. Uh, right? no. no, definitely not. Um, but I feel like there's a very big indie scene with like high schoolers. Like my sister mm -hmm. is very much into like indie stuff, mm -hmm. and she's young. And my brother, who's younger, like he, I don't know what his style of music is. He just listens to whatever he hears, like streaming through my house. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you th ever think about how like you could be the first person who introduces uh, people on YouTube to like the style of different? You know, yeah, I would music? love that. Yeah, because I think pop folk. I think it's a great genre. It's so raw and honest. Like you know, Fleet Foxes, Feist, um, Kings of Convenience, Andrew Bird. These people are, like they need to be even bigger than they are now because they've really got this X factor to them in their music. Mm -hmm. Something like something in your spirit is like touched when mm -hmm. you hear the music. So I think, yeah, I, I think it'd be an honor for me to introduce other people. In the other interviews, you talked about how your parents were really supportive of, of your music, right? Mm -hmm. What advice do you have to like people whose maybe parents are not as supportive? You know, I get a lot of emails about that, and I, and I try to answer all of them. Like I've sent like essays out, <laughs> and um, so you're asking me like what I would say to people whose parents aren't supportive? Yeah. Yeah, because most of the emails that I get concerning that topic or like my parents want me to go to law or my parents want me to you know make sure I get a bachelor's before I do anything and I would say do that because your passion project is worth pursuing but it's sometimes sometimes it doesn't work out so it's good to have a, a fallback and I, I did that I went to I made sure I finished college and my mom was very supportive but she'd always say like make sure you graduate I was like, yeah, and now I've graduated, so I'm like free. Mm -hmm. So I'd say just stick it out, tough it out for a while. What do you think like the biggest common mistake is that people are gonna make that they should look out for when they're first starting out and pursuing like a passion project? Hmm. Okay, that's a good question. I've never been asked that before. Uh, I would say that if you're doing something, or if your image is something that is not true to you, if you're trying too hard to be something else. Or be like an icon already, mm -hmm. like that's it's not gonna work for you. If there's uh, if there's dissonance there, if it doesn't align, then it's it's meant to fail, I think. So. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, well, one thing you're, that you're also really known for outside of the YouTube scene was the collaborations you did with Jay Park. Mm -hmm. So can you talk about that? <laughs> how, like how did like what has happened because of that, if anything? Oh. Um, well, you know, like, lots of, lots of, my booking manager says that we get, like, maybe ten a day that say, like, hi, we'd like you and Dev and Jay to come out and perform clouds. <laughs> and it's not so easy, you know, because we're three different people. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think we have some upcoming stuff coming out. And, um, also, well, just about the experience, it was fun. We were just like in a room one night and we were just like, hey, let's do a song. So we just busted out notepads and got to work in. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then just any last pieces of advice to young kids out there that are watching you, some that want to do what you do, but really just looking for guidance from someone they, they look up to. Yeah. Um, you know, it's all cliche, but I feel like cliche things are cliche for a reason. Um, you got to practice hard and you got to you got to chase what you love. Otherwise, you'll be unhappy until you're like 65 and then old and gray and it's too late, you know? Mm. Or it's not too late. It's never too late, but you know what I mean. There's some 65-year-old guy out there. Just yeah. Like, just like, <laughs> I'm at 165. <laughs> hey, you're watching Soompi.com.